I pressed, I pressed, I pressed, hey, hello everyone. I pressed start I, you, and I have to do a disgusting slug of a drink. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, hey guys, how are you doing? Mm. Good, good, good. What, what? Halfway uh, through January. Halfway through January, yeah, yeah. It's been, um, it's, it's, it's getting uh, uh, no less mad in 21, is it? <laughs> It's the madness is just going. Kind of... Honestly, I think it's ramping up. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's ramping. Maybe, maybe it's coming to a head, or maybe it's just that I'm seeing it because I'm the, certainly the abuse that I am getting is ramping up. Um, yeah. Uh, but you know, maybe, maybe as as more and more of it becomes mainstream, um, it is you know more and more people are getting involved, and then the more extreme things are becoming, you know, the sort yeah. of the silencing. But honestly, it's unsustainable, isn't it, to have a sort of a group where you have to keep on sort of abusing the people, your opponents, in order to almost almost sort of be who you want to be. It, it is completely, it's a completely un, unsustainable business model, I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Apparently, there's been a there's been a flounce from the SNP uh, in the same way that Amy Challoner left the Greens, accusing them of uh, transphobia. I believe the SNP um, uh, trans lobby has decided that uh, the SNP hasn't been, you know, bowing as low as they are supposed to, uh, and uh, and they've a lot of them have left. So hopefully there'll be a new party that everyone can ignore. <laughs> <laughs> because the problem is the problem isn't with. Um, with with people actually believing or going along with this stuff the problem is and that's what this show is going to be about the problem is with um respectable institutions like political parties and so on uh being infiltrated by ideological nut jobs um yes. uh yeah. today today we're going to be talking to shelly charlesworth who wrote um uh, captured uh, the full story behind the memorandum of understanding on conversion therapy. It's a bit of a mouthful, uh, and it's one of those things that you know. I have to admit, when I saw it, I thought, "Oh, I have to read this thing." Um, <laughs> but it's really compelling. It's like a thriller. It is. Yeah, um, I read and, it. Yeah, and uh, it's it's about the how uh, the what was it? The British Society of Psychologists. What is it? Uh, do you remember the name? Yeah, B Path, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's the okay. NHS, the RGCP, and the British Psychological Society. Yeah, they all got kind of how they how they went about creating um, a memorandum of understanding that basically introduced, you know, many many completely untested claims. You know, uh, uh, and all based on what's interesting about it. And we won't we won't preempt it too much. We should talk about other matters before um, Shelley Cook joins us, but. What's interesting about it is, is that this whole thing is 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 kind of built on on a on a word gender that no one can explain. No one can. No one can. It's all every time you hear you you ask for a definition of the word gender, you will ninety nine point nine percent of the time hear the word feel in there. <laughs> and I think that any any definition that needs the word feel or he feels or we feel or they feel is not a definition you know yes it's built on, it's built on sand isn't it the whole thing is built on sand and, it really is you know, and as sand you know it shifts according to which way the wind is blowing or yeah. the, you know the tide um and it's completely unstable uh, it's, yeah that's, but that's why that's why the ferocity of the of of the activists and the abuse you get uh, Helen is so is so um, you know <laughs> well I'm gonna I'm gonna use bad ling English and say it's, it's so ferocious <laughs> the ferocity of the abuse you get is so ferocious so because ferocious. because because they can't um, allow people to uh, ask you know fairly reasonable questions about all this you know they can't allow the questions to even be asked you know but um but listen there's something i wanted to talk about before we, we before we begin what do you think what do you think of the stats that have found out that between uh i can't remember when it was uh 2019 and oh yeah here we go uh 2015 and 2019 
It was apparently an 84% increase in child sexual abuse by women. <laughs> yes, that, I can see that. Helen, yeah. I didn't uh, no. think women were interested in that type of thing. Well, we've become very bad, it seems. What what changed in 2015? <laughs> did, was there something in the air that you felt that maybe... Is, I think this is very similar to what we spoke about last week, wasn't it? Um, was in that? Ireland, where, where it, um, the number of sex offenders in, in prison actually doubled. Female, yes. yeah. Female. There, there, were, there, were, there were two, yes, female sex offenders, because there were two now. Yes. And so it, 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 it doubled. And one yeah. of them was, in fact, um, male-born. Yes, of course. So it's the same. It's the same thing, isn't it? But we've been saying this for years. Um, I know that, that this is. It's it's the obvious next step, you know, because people are already saying, "Oh, you know, what about female sexual abuse? What about female sexual abuse?" And you could point to the fact that over ninety nine percent of sexual assaults are committed by those born male. Um, mm. But it's going to get harder and harder to make that claim. Yeah. Nevertheless, we can still look back and say, well, look, in fact, it, it's possibly useful in a way if we actually look at it year by year and say, look, nothing really changed. It was 99 percent, 99%, 99%. And suddenly, <laughs> look where we are. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Helen, just to say, there is a tiny little kind of air sound on your mic or something. I don't know what it is. It sounds a little bit like there's... I, 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 are you picking it up, Artie? Uh, it sounds okay to me. It sounds good. It is, Every time, it is windy, windy oh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think just that's just something... the ghost that's haunting you. But yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and, and you know, like as we always, another thing to point out is that it's probably not, as you say, it's probably not that many males uh, who are being registered as female. It's probably about two or three or four, you know, and they just fucking shoot up because women don't do it. Women, no, don't do women don't do it. You know, I mean, what's been interesting about the last few years for me has been seeing supposed progressives saying that oh, women rape too, which is the which is the standard MRA line. You know, absolutely yeah. standard. And to see standard. progressives doing it, what a disgrace! What a disgrace for them to, to Dis follow that disgraceful. line. Disgraceful, disgraceful is it? Is is exactly is exactly the word? I think. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know the people that the people that you would expect to be on your side. It turns out when the when, when it came down to it, they were not. Yeah, and it's yeah. been the most disappointing thing. Well, it it's kind of um, made me realise that uh, a lot of people who I thought were, you know, I I I have to. Admit, I was, I'm so embarrassed about for most of my life. I basically thought the left were another was another word for saying good people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And and the right, yeah. bad people, you know? And anyone who's on the right is a bad person. Anyone on the left is a good person. And now I realize that both sides have a kind of a love of power that means they'll, and they'll, and they'll do anything to attain it, you know, including, you know, just pretending a load of stuff that harms women, children, gay people, you know, it's, yes. I, I've never seen anything. I, I've never had the whole underpinning of my life <laughs> just no, gone it's because true. of this, you know. It is yeah. true. It, really it is, is actually, I feel, I feel it's been a, a good for me learning experience in a way yeah, to realize that, um, you know, it isn't that black and white. It isn't good versus evil. Um, it, it is, you know, people are nuanced and... Yeah. People, people, you know, in my tribe can also be dicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. found out that found that out more than most, Alan. I mean, the abuse you get is extraordinary. Um, Ardy, what have you been up to? Have you been doing anything recently? If you mm, no, been following I, anything? I, you know, to be honest, I think uh, uh, I need. I've been sort of taking a bit of a break from everything gender critical because mm -hmm. it's so hard to stick with it. You know. The honest mm. truth is turning into a confessional, but like, it's just really hard. It, it just feels like every day you're getting beaten down, you know, it's like a fight. And I, like, I feel like my energy levels are really low. So I just need to like really yeah, step you back need, from everything. You need a break. Me, take a total break from all this stuff and just lay low, like one tweet a day, you know, uh, and just really, really uh, just, just to, uh, to refill my energy stores because it's exhausting and it's isolating. It feels like, you know, 
I can't talk to so many people I know about this. And I'm constantly, you know, in the real world, you see people who are caught up in it. And, you know, like you're saying, it's so shocking to learn that your the underpinnings of your worldview have been completely taken away. But mm. I'm still surrounded by people who are, are in that bubble that I've finally got, gotten out of. Mm. Um, you know, so it's very, very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. You know, that's interesting to me because actually my real life friends, virtually all of them agree with my stance you know they're on they're on this side um mm. i there's I, there's only been a couple that um you know and one notably was in fact canadian <laughs> there's only been a couple who have um sort of sort of said i can't you know i can't really talk to you anymore um yeah. and and there have been some right at the beginning when it was still you know not really mainstream and i would talk about it and they were just bored <laughs> and they'd be like, I'm just bored of you now. Can you talk about something else? And yeah. they've come, they've come now sort of five years later. And they've, you know, and I, because I've said nothing to them, they've they started conversations to tell me about things. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's like I don't think I did lose a ton of friends over this, but I think there are I have some circles of friends. I mean, that when I say I'm surrounded by people, it's all on Zoom. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I have circles of friends where I just we can't broach the subject, essentially. But I yeah. think if I sat down with most of them one on one and had a real chat, I could probably persuade them to at least meet me part of the way. Uh, to at least understand some of the issue, but it just takes so much work. And in the meantime, you yes. know, <laughs> yeah, you, just, yeah. you know, well, I, I, I this is... on a group chat correcting someone for misgendering someone and that kind of thing. And it's like, you know, yeah. yeah, the difficult thing as well is is simply that, you know, there's very few people brave enough to do it. You know, like 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 it's 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 it does take a, a, a it does take a certain amount of bravery, especially if you're if you're gay. Um, uh, because you're going against the, um, uh, Shelly's here, by the way, I'm going to bring her in in a second. Hi, Shelly, which in one sec. Um, but there's, um, there's a, uh, and because of it takes, uh, bravery, the, the amount of people who are doing it are very few, which means that a very small amount of people are dealing with a huge amount of news, you know, like the BBC, Here's I'll 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 just make this point and then we'll move on to um we'll move on to Shelley. But the BBC did a report on women who sexually abuse, and they mentioned, I believe, that figure, and there wasn't a word about the fact that that men are now being put down as women. You know, so the BBC is is you know is kind of um, well they're colluding with a lie, aren't they? I, yeah. I mean, there's there's no other way of putting it. This is exactly. a lie. We know exactly. it's a lie. They know it's a lie, but they're colluding with it. Yeah. So we're doing a big report on that. Um, and, you know, no one else will. Who else will? You know, I mean, it's crazy. It's just insane how there's no pickup on this stuff from from. But um, we're going to we're going to talk about one of the reasons why that is with Shelley now, because um, uh, let me just do a quick introduction. Shelley wrote this uh, uh, um, uh, PDF. Um, about the Memorandum of Understanding and Conversion Therapy. Now that is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, I promise you it's important and it's key to this because conversion therapy is a word that's being bandied about a lot by trans rights activists. And it doesn't mean what people think it, think it means. And the attempt to make it uh, mean what they want it to mean is, uh, is purely ideological. And it's what, it's what Shelley has been investigating. So um, let me bring her in. Uh, Shelley, hello. Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. That's a pleasure. Um, <laughs> your P, your 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 PDF. We'll link to it in the comments. Um, okay. But it it's a it's uh, oh and again uh, apologies for uh, attributing it to uh, Stephanie. Um, uh, I, I was saying that I've become slightly obsessed with Stephanie Davis Arai, and I keep uh, <laughs> attributing things to her that she hasn't actually done. Uh, she's well, a kind she of a lovely woman. She's a lovely she's woman, and she. Good. And she just, She's and Wonder she, Woman, really, but you know, yeah. she she contributed to it. But yeah, I, I did the hard grind of putting one word before and after another. another. Yeah, yeah, and it's but the thing about it is, is Stephanie is is quite is is almost 
uh, a central figure in it. She's like the, you could say the hero of this story, you know, uh, because she's, she's, uh, she pushed back on what you're talking about in various ways, but we'll move on to her in a second. Can you, first of all, for people who might be, you know, put off by the title, can you explain why people should be interested in the memora memorandum of understanding uh, on conversion therapy? Right. Well, put briefly, really, you should always be interested in policy and governance because that has sort of helped to get us into the mess we're in now because policy and laws have changed without people overseeing them. And um, it, to do with gender identity, as you know, in all areas, uh, uh, education, the law, everywhere. Um, yes. And the psychological professions are not immune to it. And um, they had a memorandum of understanding that they brought in in 2015 that was perfectly reasonable. And a memorandum of understanding, you know, you can have it on any subject. This happens to be on conversion therapy. They're in trade, they're in all sorts of areas of life. But um, this one uh, um, is sort of a guideline for people who work in the psychological professions, in the therapeutic professions. And most of the big therapeutic bodies signed up to it, as did Stonewall and as did um, the NHS England, the Royal College of Psychiatrists, of GPs, and all the big psych bodies. And it was uncontroversial it said you shouldn't try and convert somebody if they're gay mm -hmm. gay yes. or lesbian fair enough who would which, you, which is the understanding that most people would have of conversion therapy up until about three or four years ago yeah and um it it was never really proved that it was a really big issue that it was happening everywhere but you know it was it was a good statement to have and uh, then once this was passed and everybody signed up to it stephanie from transgender trend and others got word that there was going to be a move to um include gender identity which is a completely different um category as as we all know it's, it's about an inner feeling of who you are of what, what your gender is and they said you shouldn't try and pe stop people you know believing in this you should, uh, the the memorandum of understanding was to say you should always affirm people's gender identity and there was stephanie wrote fantastic letters to all the bodies she wrote to the mini, uh, minister for public health she tried to get debates going and there was a debate in one organization called the uh, united kingdom um, council for psychotherapy they were at the time leading this process. They, they, you know, they they were the ones in charge of the agenda and the meetings and that sort of thing. And um, it looked as if she was going to get somewhere. She, um, the UKCP, that's their acronym, not UKIP, but UKCP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's I know, I know. Uh, it, they sort of considered it, and but. It was thrown out, and it was thrown out by ma mainly by other activists who were involved in a, a separate group called the Memorandum of Understanding Group. It was like a working group, you know, with people from all sorts of different organisations in it, and and it got passed. And eff effectively, what it meant, what it did, was it silenced people who wanted to talk about gender identity, therapists who wanted to um, treat. Uh, clients who were coming to them with you know confusion about how they felt mm -hmm. uh, maybe had body issues all sorts of things felt quite shut down by this had a chilling effect and transgender trend itself was uh, contacted by a lot of therapists who said that they um they were just not going to want to take on clients who um oh. uh, because of this and you know I, and it sounds as if it is it sounds a bit kind of improbable but it isn't because um that's one of the problems we have with it yeah, the, yeah. we can prove that it's it actually happened mm. and that therapists were frightened and they had a right to be frightened because 
another big body called the uh, British Association for Counseling and Psychotherapists. Now they've got 50,000 members 50, and organizations affiliated to them. And if you want to practice as a psychotherapist and you're a member of that, uh, you're affiliated to them, you, you know, that means something and it helps in your work. So um, if they're signed up to this memorandum of understanding that says you have to affirm gender identity, identity, you can't, you know, you, you can't offer alternative explanations for why uh, somebody feels like they're born in the wrong body. Um, you've just got to go along with it. Mm. Um, they, uh, they commissioned an article and Stephanie from Transgender Trend and some other skeptical therapists were interviewed for it. Um, it never made publication. The, um, the editorial board just cut it in half. They cut out all the gender critical voices from it. And so Stephanie wrote this very short, not mild, quite firm letter, but, you know, saying, look, there are reasons why um, uh, we don't think gender identity should be in the memorandum of understanding. And there was this huge outcry. Um, saying that the letter should never have been published in the House Journal of the British Association for Counselling and Psychotherapy. So, um, and, and they even apologised, didn't they? Up to, and, and the editor had to do this sort of grovelling apology. It's like she'd been to a re-education camp in the Ouija province, you know. Mm, sorry, I'm, you know, and I, I, I shouldn't have done it. And, yeah, yeah. And, that's then read by people, I and mean, that's the effect. It's silencing, and uh, you 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 can't even write a letter saying, "I think there are problems with this." And then, you know, what happened? It, what's happened more recently is that the the group that was in charge of memorandum of understanding seems to have just tried to pretend, "Oh no, we didn't really have anything to do with this anymore." And it's it's been taken over by smaller groups of activists and people who want to give prescribing rights to psych psychologists. Yes, that's that crossover between um, uh, you know people who only want to affirm and people who think psychologists, but not doctors, psychologists have just got a psychology degree should be able to prescribe drugs. Hormones. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, one of off-label. Yes, yeah. off-label. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, they definitely say it's off-label. They explain it. Uh, the, the British Psychological Society has done all the work on this, and they're pushing for it, or some people are pushing for it within the BPS. And they say, yeah, for instance, the drugs we're talking about are cross-sex hormones. So, you, you know, it, 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 it's, it would cut out all those referrals to the endocrinology clinic. Uh, you could go in with your... your um, you, you know, your belief that you're born in the wrong body, persuade a psychologist and the psychologist could give you a prescription for a for cross-sex hormones. It, it, it's, it doesn't bear thinking about, really. The, 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 psychologist, yeah. the psychologist could be accused of conversion therapy if he refuses. Isn't that right? Yes, yes. It, 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 I, uh, if a, if a psychologist refuses what to 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 uh, prescribe, uh, yeah. Drug, yeah, well, yeah. well, yeah, I think it's uh, no because it hasn't become a thing yet. It's not a no, no. Um, I mean, I it mean, it could it could come to pass. I mean, I'll give yes, you an example. Of someone, yes, yeah, some, yeah. someone wrote to me, uh, Shelley, a psychoanalyst in Ireland, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and they said that. Um, they had one, you know, they, you know, they, they're sitting there as young people come in and are in tears because they think J.K. Rowling hates them. And she says that she is not, a, she is not able to say, it's not true. You, you, you know, she doesn't hate you, you know, because if she does, she might be reported. <laughs> She's literally worried about being reported for saying something like that. I, I, I think it's, it's very, very real. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it um, is, and it, and it's again, it's it's that that word that you used. It's outrage, and the whole thing, like all of this, is done with the language of out, outrage, isn't it? It's it's all it's so it has every, to be. Everything's a phobia. Get, yes, everything. It's you know, you're like you were saying about just the letter, the editor having to actually say, "Oh, I, I'm really sorry. We should never have published it." 
it's a letter from a member of the public sort of suggesting that maybe this isn't quite um, all above board. And and it, and it's the same thing again and again. It's like, you know, you're you're transphobic, you're a you're a bigot, um, you're killing people, you want you want people to die. It's it's mm. it's having to just it just goes to the extremes in order to make people think, well, there must be there must be something in it then. Because it sounds so bad. These these awful people sound so evil. Um, yeah, yeah. It's obviously How, it's a purposeful thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's Sorry, Shelley, go on. I, I was just going to say, what was really kind of revealing was uh, there's there's a video that surfaced um, on, online of um, a meeting of Pink Therapy. And Pink Therapy have been involved in getting a memorandum of understanding passed and, and extended uh, from the beginning. And they now want to make conversion uh, therapy uh, they want a legal ban against it so so not only will it be in any in, in these sort of professional guidelines but in law you will not be able to convert anyone but despite I mean and this is despite the lack of evidence it's, that's that it's actually going on the evidence for it going on is so thin mm -hmm. it, there's more evidence slightly for it going on with um, gay people but it's mostly coming from communities and faith-based communities. It's not. It's not coming from yeah. the psychological, uh, psychotherapeutic professions. But anyway, just this this pink therapy video was incredible. They're saying, "Oh yeah, we're going to work really hard to get this legal ban," and the founder of Pink Therapy gave a little outline, and he said at the beginning, "We didn't think there was much need for a." MOU on conversion therapy. We didn't think it really happened. I mean, right from the horse's mouth, it was clear that he went, you know, it was going along with it because he saw it as a good kind of um, activist, trans activist campaigning yeah. tool. And that, that's what's so shocking and, and I hope will become more apparent. And I hope that the big bodies who've signed up to this uh, uh, and who have now signed up to something that has is in direct conflict with the Kira Bell judgment as well, um, will rethink. And that's the Royal College of GPs. They have to come out and say, we don't want any more of this. It, it's uh, um, yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, one one thing that people have to realise, and it, it, nothing's going to happen until they do, is is they everyone has to stand up at the same time so that there's yeah. fewer targets for these people to attack. You know. Um, yeah. Let, let me here's something that I, I just find fascinating and it's a little bit hard to put into words so maybe we can use the next few minutes to, to do that a little bit the thing I find most fascinating fascinating about conversion therapy as a phrase applied to trans people is that conversion therapy uh, banning conversion therapy is the same thing as saying conversion therapy is okay for gay people I, and it's kind of hard to, to say what I'm saying here, but basically, if you're telling a young gay person that, oh no, you're actually the opposite sex, you're trans, then you're doing conversion therapy on a gay yeah. person. So yeah. how come none of these groups have recognized this obvious uh, state of affairs? I, I can't talk for the professional bodies at a higher level, but it has been pointed out to them many times before. Uh, I, I, I was just looking back on Transgender Trends blog, you know, because it goes back to 2015. And, and Stephanie was on this five years ago, absolutely writing about it and uh, making exactly that point that it is it is telling young gay and lesbian, uh, lesbian young people that um, no, you change your body because it's you know you're I, actually, I, I, you're actually yeah. heterosexual. You're actually yeah. heterosexual. You're just uh, in the wrong uh, body. And, and it's, again, oh, it's conversion therapy, pure and simple. Mm -hmm. But again, it relies on uh, I, you know I come back again and again to that point Artie made about four weeks ago that trans is something that you are, as opposed to it is actually something that you choose to do as a response to how you feel. Um, which are very different things. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the, the the whole idea of conversion therapy absolutely oh. rests on the idea that you are actually trans. It's, it's what you are as opposed to a, a response to what you are doing. I mean, exactly. how you feel. 
because what they're trying to do is say, oh, I, 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 my hands were tied. It's not a decision that I've made. And I think it's it's often the autogynophiles trying to say, this isn't a decision that I'm making because it's going to satisfy me sexually. They want to absolve themselves of the, uh, you know, of their own decision by saying, it's yeah. just something that just, it's just there, it's innate. And look, you see it in children. So they're trying to get as many children yeah. into their group to hide behind them, essentially. Uh, but the whole thing with gays and trans and these conversion therapy bills, it's going to be so hard to make people uh, to undo these bills because yeah. it involves, you have to make people explicitly state that no, trans is not like gay. And they have to come right out and say no. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah, yeah. politicians don't want to do that because it's a very, very costly thing to do right now. People in political power, even when they know that they can see that a lot of trans people are just distressed homosexual men and women who are trying to cope with it. If they can see that there's homophobia behind a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Part of it is they feel it's not their place to say because they're not in the community. They're not gay themselves. So mm -hmm. they think it's not their business to judge, which I think is just a sort of, you know, dismissing the gays. Never, uh, never, never a problem I had. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. It's you people in your crazy outfits and your non-conformity. <laughs> you do your thing, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're terrible music, but it's so danceable. Um, <laughs> but the other thing is, uh, it's just that, yeah, I think there's, they feel their hands are tied. They feel like, I know that this isn't the same thing, but I can't say so because the political cost is just way, way too high. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's, it's really going to be years before we see people really try to address this there has to be a massive breaking open of this discussion before politicians and people in power can stand up and say trans is not like gay at all you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely um uh, but um in terms of i mean here's another thing that i find uh fascinating about this especially when it comes to making things like memorandums of understanding and things that people have to used to in a practical way to guide them in real life, which is that there's so many, because gender is so vague as a concept and no one can define it, no one can settle on a, on a definition that works, then they can really say anything they want. So it's a kind of, it's the opposite of a memorandum of understanding. It's a memorandum of not understanding. Because it's, uh, because it's like, as we were saying earlier, it's built on sand. It's built on internal feelings. You know, the idea that a man can feel like a woman. What does a woman feel like? Even women don't feel like women. Men don't feel like men. It's just, it's just we, we have personalities. We are individuals. And this weird Americanized thing. Oh, actually, sorry. No, I'm going to derail myself. Um, <laughs> I, I want to <laughs> talk a little bit about one of the things that you pointed out, in fact, this is it is kind of related, but one of the things you pointed out in the piece is that, like, two, two things that really stood out for me. One is this Meg John person mm -hmm. who is uh, who is an expert in BDSM and kink and, and queer theory. What does that have to do with young children experiencing gender dysphoria? Well, it's a very good question. <laughs> Meg John is um, has been a kind of activist uh, psychologist for a long time, and uh, the, uh, if you look at the bio bios of some of these people, like Meg John Barker, or um, I think it's Darren Langridge, and another one who's a professor of psychology. Um, they, they're interested in a whole range of things, but they're always interested in kink and BDSM and, you know, furries and things like that as well. And I, it's because they come at it from a queer theory perspective where, you know, it's all about dissolving boundaries and, and saying that anything goes really in terms of, you know, you should not be judgmental about anything anybody anybody ever does or says about themselves and you um affirm 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 it it, it it does fit together quite well yeah i was just on gender i just want to read you this bit out it's really funny uh from the british psychological society it's quite you think quite an august body 
their mm-hmm. guidelines, not their guidelines, it's their literature review that accompanies the guidelines. You talk about gender and it meaning it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So it says people may describe themselves as trans men and trans women, though still in their natally assigned gender roles, as essentially they are still the same person, whatever gender role they adopt, and their gender identity may always have been of a different gender to their socially assigned natal gender. <laughs> I read that. I can't tell you how many times it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. What is your socially assigned natal gender? <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of like. Uh, um, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of stuff like that because it's all trickled down from the high priestess of completely unreadable shite, which is Judith Butler. Yeah, yeah. As D- Douglas Murray said about Judith Butler, writing this bad is trying to hide something. That's and exactly I, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, the same yeah. is true here. You know, this is trying to hide something, you know. It's yeah. trying to hide, first of all, that these people have no, should not be near decisions involving children at all. No. No. And, and another thing is uh, another thing that I did not know that really blew me away is Christina Richards. Is that is that their name? Is yeah. the is, head consultant psych, psychiatrist or psychologist? At, psychologist. Psychologist at the Tavistock. No, um, yeah, but just a sec here. Let me. Uh, I said very clearly at the gender identity clinic. Charing Cross. It's Charing Cross. It's for the adults. It's not. It's not the children's that. that oh, okay. And it's all under the same NHS trust. I think that's maybe where you uh, got. Oh, I see. I thought she was. So I, I, thought... I gave Christina Richards full title, which is that consultant, uh, lead consultant, psych- psychologist at the Gender Identity Clinic in brackets Charing Cross at nice. the Tavistock and Portman NHS Trust. Okay, so so this person would not. No, it deals with um, adults. Okay, okay, well that's fine. <laughs> but don't forget, really... a lot of these kids they get sh- moved into the adult program the second they turn eighteen. So these are still extremely young people. And right now, yeah. all, most of the people in this yeah. clinic, if they're not you know middle aged males who are leaving their wives to pursue sex change full time, then it's it's you know. Adolescent Ooh. girls and boys who are yeah, here. Uh, 17 yeah. and a half. It is here. You, it, once oh, you, goodness. Yeah. 17, six months. That's it. You're, you're off to the adult services. Yeah, but I mean, Christina Richards helped to write the BPS guidelines and is on the prescribing group and um, is, is she on the MOU group? I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, there's lots of cross um, people appear in. Same people keep cropping up in different roles, and Christina mm. Richards is one of them. Mm. I, it's, I, extra- I it's extraordinary the, the, the reach that they that they have had. Um, and again, I think it is that language of outrage has worked very well for them because it, it does work to silence people. Um, you, you know, to you, and then you silence one or two, and people get vilified, and everyone else, you know, the chilling effect takes hold, and everyone else stays quiet. Um, yeah, and it's it, so dangerous. I've talked about this before, where the, the parallels with the gay rights movement. The gay rights movement had some problems, and it really benefited from rigorous pushback and rigorous, what would you call, vetting. Because inside the, the gay rights movement, like you were saying, Shelley, was all about eliminating all the boundaries. A few minutes ago, we were talking about why are all these BDSM fetishists all involved in trans? It's because they want to break down all the boundaries and that anything goes. That's exactly the language of uh, sexual liberation in the 70s. And that was wrong. I'll bet if you do one of those Google searches for like terms and when they start appearing in the literature, the term consenting adults probably emerged in the 70s as a result of the pushback against sexual liberation. People were saying Mm. all sex goes. You shouldn't police any sex between people. And people said, Mm. no, non-consensual sex is bad. Sex with minors is bad. Um, and the gay rights movement was filled with people who were rapists and who were pedophiles. You know, yeah. the founding yeah. father of the gay rights movement, so to speak, of the modern gay liberation movement, Harry Hay, was an outspoken pedophile. And in the yeah. 80s, the gay rights movement had to really make take steps to, to push out the pedophiles from its movement. They really had to literally have meetings, go through lists of members and say, pedophile, 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 out, really? out, out. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. They had to do that. 
and they had to kick them out of the parades. And many, many of the leaders had to go. And Harry Hay was furious. He thought the gay rights movement and the sex with children movement were part and parcel of the same, where the, it should have been united. And he was Ooh. very, very unhappy that the gay rights movement separated itself from the pedophilia movement. Um, and he vowed never to return to a pride parade until the day he died. And we're seeing the same thing with trans. We're seeing like all boundaries are being opened, uh, yeah. all safeguarding around children and women. Again, same thing, being opened right up. Uh, but this time there isn't the vetting process. There isn't the pushback. There isn't the debate and discussion. And there isn't that sort of coming to terms where the trans leadership have to go, wait a minute, we have some predators in our midst. You know, ooh, ooh. when obviously most trans people aren't, but there are absolutely some people in this movement who shouldn't be there, you know, who are taking yeah. advantage of things. Yeah. yeah I, also, it it ties in, sorry, sure. Uh, uh, it, it also ties in with a lot of um, the um, sort of politicized activist language around um, trans identified ch uh, children and young people, uh, in that it's, it's, it's about giving them autonomy and that re reminds me of that what you're talking about Artie the, the the children's rights movement was really big in the 70s and that was saying you know children have the right to do this not go to school not to you know not get dressed have sex <laughs> it, it was it, it was it was it was kind of superficially um very alluring that children had rights and mm. it, it took a while to work out actually they don't have a right to be sexually exploited or anything like that and i think we're, we're seeing the same thing that it that the 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 trans movement is is also coming at the issue of giving children um, um putting children on a medicalized pathway from that position of rights human rights the, the child's human right to be to express themselves um uh, you yeah, know sure. you talk about drag kids and you're told oh it's a child's human right to Mm. Uh, dress up in that highly sexualized way. It, it's um, it, it 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 it's you can know, sort of fight it on all fronts. All the arguments. Was, uh, I remember in one of the early t earlier Times reports about the uh, Tavistock. There was one um, clinician who said that they were haunted by the memory of a father who brought his daughter in to get uh, to get to start the daughter on hormones and, and surgery, et cetera. And this person said uh, they were haunted because they they really suspected the father was a pedophile and was abusing the child and was trying to keep the child looking superficially young, pre prepubescent, you know? So there's, there's like, it, but, but the thing is, it, it, it's an interesting, it's always an interesting conversation because, and, and, and this is the kind of nuance that they leap on. Uh, the, our, our, our opponents in this, you know, um, because I genuinely don't think that uh, everyone involved in pushing this stuff is trying to kind of create rights for predators. I don't even think they, they necessarily know or they, I think if you told them, if you kind of laid out the case in front of them, a lot of these people would be horrified and shocked at the idea. But the thing is, they are helping predators. They are helping Fetishists. They are help. No, sorry, nothing. Nothing wrong being a fetishist if you're a cons consenting adult. But they are helping people who are glomming onto this activism for reasons that are not good, for reasons yes. that are. You know, do you I know think, what I mean? I think that's. I do. I think that's quite clear from say some of the people who I I interact with on Twitter. They just think you've you're got, evil. You've... They think you're like an evil crazy person. <laughs> that's true. There's, you know, there, there are there are many. Who, who come at it from the, you know, trans people just want to have rights, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got some, like a, a few, a core of them, who I have actually started blocking now. <laughs> that, and, and, and you can see the direct, they take the language that I use and then they use it back. You know, you're a danger to children. You're, you're, you're a date. You want to see naked children. You want to undress with naked children. And that is, that's, that's I think, quite telling. That yeah. people, uh, you know, that there are there are a core of people who want to try and silence women for actually wanting um, safeguarding of children because you've got to ask why are they going to such lengths to silence, you know, to silence dissent on, you know, to silence criticism of this. It's 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 quite worrying. There's and it isn't that many, but there is, but there are a core 
and and then you look at their feed and there's a you know there's a huge amount of sex on it huge amount of pictures of themselves you know just sexy what what they feel is uh, sexy clothing um and and it's very very worrying and these are the people in general who are come back to me and say, oh my God, you're the danger to children, not me. I'm trying, somebody, somebody the other day, it was the most extraordinary thing, was saying, I, I can't believe it. I'm here to just safeguard children from women like Helen. <laughs> it's an extraordinary yeah. reversal. This is what happens when predators work in groups, you know? When predators work in groups, they will they will attempt to normalize the other person's behavior and statements and and you know they just hope to build up a picture of you that's kind of re-emphasized by every every other person in the thread and so on you yes. know I, uh, yeah, absolutely. yeah. I, I just ask people to be alert to uh, listening out for all this um, autonomy of children language that you hear and children's rights and children's human rights uh, ch their human right to express themselves because it, you hear it more and more the, a lot of the criticism that, that came out after Kira Bell was about you know we didn't hear the voices of children uh, young people mm, that mm. was untrue because they were heard um, in the court case that's the whole point of it really that <laughs> but uh, it, the Tavistock put their voices forward um, but um, when you hear that it, it it's so kind of pervasive in our culture now that children are these little autonomous beings with their identities all already fixed. You know, oh, he's this, she's that, and or you know, and you let them do this, and you encourage that, and you know, you, they're treated like they've got this kind of amazing power, and that you are there as a parent to service and bring out and and look after and encourage, and it. it it, it's a, a modern child rearing methods dovetail very neatly into the trans narrative that uh, if a child says i feel like this you know you believe them um mm -hmm. believe them because because they're children and their autonomy should be respected and mm -hmm. they have rights to express themselves and, and, and I, I, I would just ask everyone to be really really super alert to that Yes, yes. And we've seen it happen in real time, or I certainly have seen it happen from this from this time I started being aware of this. Um, back when you know I I was friends with Stephanie from the Normal Page Three campaign. So back mm -hmm. then, and we and it was mainly adult trans um, women who were the ones that we were sort of fighting with online. And it started the the the. Um, the talking about the children, the 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 young girls, the sort of 14, 50 year old girls, they they started it it started very slowly. Um, them talking, you know, it was basically using young girls yeah. um, in order as a front in order to sort of uh, you know normalize the idea, as we were saying earlier, that yeah. trans is a thing that you are. And we saw it, we saw it build up. Um, it was it was very few and far between, and now it's massive. And really, unfortunately. These young people, um, they, you know, a lot of them, uh, both boys and girls, um, have it's it's an enjoyable thing for a while to be special, to be told that you are, you know, like affirmed and loved, yes. and you're so brave and you're so great, and so they act, they don't want that to go, um, and so they're also there then, you know, joining in. And yes. saying, you know, these women are horrible bigots, et cetera, et cetera. And it's it's been a it's been a brilliant coup on the part of the trans activists. I've got to I've got to give it to them. But well, now we're coming to the beginning of the of the start of the other end of it, where you're getting all the detransitioners coming along. And it's just and it's you know that desperate curve that we've seen. It's we've seen it unfold, and it's just awful. Well, you know, further to what Artie was saying earlier about um, the gay movement needing to purge um, uh, pedophiles from their ranks. I mean, I, I, I'm sure everyone who's watching this knows, but the P, PIE in the 70s in the UK had a lot of support from people who should have known better. And the thing that always blows me away about PIE is that PIE stands for Pedophile Information Exchange. There was no, there was no attempt to... 
<laughs> cover it up or kind of go lightly on, well, maybe we shouldn't actually say we're pedophiles. <laughs> I, would have thought, I would have thought when you're naming an organization, that would be rule number one. Don't, <laughs> don't call yourself anything to do with pedophiles. But anyway, they did, and they had a bit of weird success. And when they were beaten back, they must have, you know, it's not like pedophiles fucking disappeared from the, from the scene after that. They obviously thought, well, when we do this again, we need to get the kids involved. We need to get the kids <laughs> fighting for their rights, you know. And yeah. and I I do think that that is what that is uh, an aspect to what's happening at the moment. Um, Shelley, uh, uh, we we've only got like uh, ten minutes left, um, but I just wanted to ask you one thing. Uh, um, one of the things you point out in the piece is that the only uh, the only kind of approach to working with children who are uh, who are uh, experiencing dysphoria that has been proved to work is watchful waiting. Is that right? That's right, isn't it? That's, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, so um, how has early affirmation, how has it advanced without any evidence to back it up? Has it, is it just through force? Yeah, I, I, I guess it is. I, I, um, the people who are, who are pressing for drug treatments kind of needed affirmation as the therapeutic model, I suppose. And you think that puberty blockers weren't really, um, they, they weren't manufactured, they weren't made or used until they started being used um, in Holland. Uh, uh, I mean, they were used for precocious puberty, obviously. Uh, but we're only talking a few decades ago, so it's a very short um, time span, really. And to, to justify, I suppose, the use of puberty blockers, you, you need to make sure that people don't say, oh, we'll just hang on before we use those, I suppose. And there's a bit, you know, activist groups like um, um, Gyres and Jedden Intelligence and Mermaids have been pushing, knocking at the door of the Tavistock since the beginning of this century. Um, it, that, that's all documented and um, saying, look, these are the drugs, we want them. So we've got the drugs, why bother with watchful waiting anymore? And then, because watchful waiting became, uh, was... Conversion therapy. <laughs> they call well, it conversion therapy. It, it, it just became discredited. And uh, Artie will know the story of uh, Ken, well, maybe you all do. Ken Zucker in in Canada, who oh, yeah. you know, a very respected clinician who who um, d dealt with gender dysphoric children all his professional career and lost his job more or less at the end of it because of activists uh, saying he wasn't affirming children enough. So the affirming kind of goes a a along with the drugs. I think the the, the two things are needed. Um, Could there be financial uh, uh, in, in, interests behind some of this? It's an argument people make. I, I, personally, I, I I haven't really gone into that, and I'm I, I'm not madly interested because I I see it all more as um, an ideology uh, uh, that's a, a way of understanding for young people certain forms of distress about growing up you know it's 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 difficult who'd want to grow up today when you're online all the time and and you've got images of perfect bodies all the time it's nothing like when i was growing up and when my children were growing up nothing at all so uh, i think it, it i think it is as as stephanie said she named transgender trend because she thought it was a trend um, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I call it a cult either, but um, I, there is money behind it. I can't believe there's big, big bucks behind it, but people are so invested in it. Yeah. The adult yeah. males are so invested in it. They yeah. want everybody to believe in it. Um, yes. So, yeah. and if and you, if you believe in it, it, if you're a man in your 40s and wants to transition, it pays to say, you know, it pays um well, so we, we know say, that. i always felt like this so children must feel like this exactly. I, I i don't know that uh, whether the I, I don't know about the costs of the drugs i know that there are people who do think that there's a kind of big big pharma sort of industry pushing it 
Mm. Um, but um, it's not really my field. It's, I, I think it, I, I for me, it is, it is a political movement in the way that, say, being a Maoist was really, or, or mm. Mm. member of the Reb Brigades or something like that, where you believe in it. You just believe that that is how the world works. Yeah, well, I think it started. It's the ideology that started. Well, I, I had to do some research into this for because of uh, Canada's pushing gender conversion therapy ban as well. Mm -hmm. I think money has, has, has suddenly woken up, and now there is big money in it. And now there are especially surgeons opening up clinics everywhere because there's money in it and mm -hmm. financial. Uh, yeah, it's it's a market. It's it's become mm -hmm. a market. Everyone's woken up to it. Pharmaceutical industries are alert to it now. Uh, I don't think it started with money, though. It didn't start with big money. No. It started with <laughs> middle-aged men trying to justify themselves and trying to recruit children into this yeah. movement. Yes, yeah. because we know that we know that um, men who, you know, there are a certain um, sort of cabal of men who really they they will let nothing come between them and their their sort of need to have sex. You know, like men will go into the priesthood. They will they will become teachers. They, you know, they will dedicate their whole lives in pursuit of yeah. this aim. So, yes, of course, they are going to recruit children in or, you know, to prop up the fact that they want the world to um, believe in them. Well, one, one part of grooming is uh, a key part of grooming is separating the child from the parents. And that is now being done across society by groups that really should know better, you know, like, like, you know, everyone from Stonewall to the BBC, this encourage, this constant encouragement, if your parents aren't affirming you, by which they mean if they aren't fucking, as uh, I think uh, uh, Tanya uh, uh, Traster put it, uh, waving pom-poms because you, you want to get a double mastectomy, then that's considered, you know, oppressive. And, and the advice being given by these reckless, immoral people is oh well you need to separate yourself from your parents because they're they're you know they're they're uh, but also uh, as as one of the commentators as Crumbly Duckling has has said you know even at a um, linguistic level they are trying to make the word mother yeah. um, sort of mm. taboo and not and not used and that's yeah. also in a way you know that's again sort of separating the children from like their protectors their mothers. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what Stonewall wants to do. I mean, that, that's you get points, points mean prizes with Stonewall in their uh, workplace equality index for making gender neutral, having gender neutral policies. So, yes, you talk about um, pa parents or, or, you know, uh, the birthing parent or something like that. Um, but the Welsh government's just signed up to all this uh, nonsense. Um, yeah, I, I'd also like to say, on that um, sort of alien, parental alienation, social workers are another field where, which uh, is sort of semi-captured and where there's fortunately some pushback now, but there's an alarming number of children who are in care or have been adopted uh, get sucked into uh, the trans narrative at some stage. And, you know, you can, you can see, um, why it would appeal there and they're not really being helped by social workers who think um affirm affirm yeah yeah so so all, all the vulnerable groups are being um targeted now uh, 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 orphans uh, uh, people in uh foster care they're in just huge numbers they're being targeted and now i'm yeah. seeing this gonna sound weird but i think uh people who are experiencing homelessness now it's <laughs> Yeah. I've just seen so many of them uh, who just seem to be, they're being told that they should be trans, they should cross-dress, you know? Oh, you don't have any clothes? Here's some clothes. Why don't you try on some women's clothes, you know? <laughs> Where are you seeing this? Where are you seeing this? Oh, there's a huge homeless population in in, in my city, and suddenly mm -hmm. they're just all cross-dressed. No. And, yeah, That's it's crazy. really bizarre. It's so bizarre. Oh it's just God. garden variety, you know, scraggly beard, talking to themselves, but they're not wearing dresses. <laughs> I, would say, I would say the donations would be going up, uh, certainly from uh, from uh, liberals. Um, uh, Shelley, it, it's a brilliant piece. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I, again, I'm so sorry that I, I um, uh, didn't uh, uh, credit it properly. 
But I mean, I wouldn't have written it without Stephanie, and no, she's sure. on transgender trend. Of, Stephanie you know, is, so is, is, is and, as I say, people should go if they want to find it. But um, uh, yes, I will. We will put the link. Uh, hopefully, Artie, if you don't mind doing boilerplate as always, that would be. I would do boilerplate. Yeah, if there's any links to add, just uh, tell me yeah. what they are. So I look them up or send them to me, or I won't be able to put them in if I don't. Uh, yes, I will do that. I will do that yeah. straight away. Um, uh, but Shelley, are you working on anything new? Are you going to be doing another report, or uh, what are you what are you looking at next? I am looking at something coming out soon. I'm not going to say because okay, I just be good. Well, maybe, you, maybe, maybe, we'll, okay. Uh, maybe you can come on and talk to us again when when it's out. I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you guys again for uh, for another uh, mess. And um, I'll finish it for our audience. But if you hang around, I'll say goodbye properly. And uh, yeah, thank you. See you next week. Um, stay well. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.